New acquisitions in Montrez Harrell has broken out into DC's second leading score, Spencer Dinwiddie's leading the Wiz in assists per game, and a few other pieces along with Trez from the Lakers in the clutch Kyle Kuzma and KCP have shockingly combined to give Bradley Beal a productive supporting cast. The scariest part about the Washington Wizards being the number one seed with a record of 8-3 and three is the fact that the NBA's second leading scorer from last year in Bradley Beal hasn't even found his rhythm yet. This video breaks down every reason for why DC's been rising early on, and stay tuned to see if I think they can keep it up. Before continuing, only 24.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Beal's gone from being number two in the league in points per game last season to number 17 in scoring in 21-22. Considering Bradley's only shooting 25% from three-point range and his team is still number one in the East, that little bit of information could individually prove that the Wizards hot start is far from a fluke, because everyone from hardcore to casual fans knows that Beal's going to find his flow soon enough. He did that against the reigning champions recently as Double B diced through the Milwaukee Bucks defense to put up a blistering season high 14 field goals. The 28 year old now 10 year pro out of Florida has been loyal to the capital of America as Beal spent a full decade in DC. Over that time, the shooting guards built up an NBA trophy rack that includes three all-star appearances, an all NBA third team appearance in 2021, and he was all rookie first team back in 2013. A first time all NBA player last year who's still squarely in his prime, Beal is an electric off ball mover and scorer who's been top four in scoring every year since 2017 18. However, Beal was the first 30 point per game scorer ever who didn't receive an all star bid back in 2019 20 based off a poor defensive season where he was in the bottom fourth percentile in defensive estimated plus minus. While Beal's a slightly below average defender, the fact that he's a complete liability on this end is just a false narrative. Beal's strong for his size and has a six foot eight wingspan, which is solid considering his height is six foot four. Defensively, he can hold up at the point of attack and at times make plays off the ball, but he'll struggle in screen navigation and get back cut quite often. The furthest Beals ever made it in the playoffs was in 2017, when he and John Wall came up one win short of beating the Isaiah Thomas-led Celtics in round two. Brad and the Wizards have made the second round three times during his tenure, but that hasn't happened in four years, and it's been a very long time since the organization's been considered legit contenders. After finishing as the number eight seed in 2021 and getting taken care of by the Sixers in five, they had their moments last season, and I even posted this video on them when they went on a winning streak late in the year. But after trading Russell Westbrook in the offseason and getting back some pieces that are better suited around the best shooting guard in the NBA in Beal, the Wiz kids are looking more like the Wiz men, as they've been tearing through some tough competition early on. While I expect a lot of these players' production I'm about to break down to somewhat fall off, as I said, Brad Beal's play is only going to pick up, so keep that in mind. This all starts with the two biggest pickups for the Wizards that are making the franchise the most dangerous they've been in years, at least in the early going. Those two pickups this past summer were the speedy, athletic phenom up front in Montrez Harrell, who's playing the best ball of his career, along with the team's leader in assists per game in Spencer Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie can break down his matchup in isos, and most prominently the pick and roll, where his long strides and tight handle allow him to tear through defensive game plans. Last year, things were a tad out of control with Westbrook demanding the ball and taking away looks from Beal at times, but while Russ took 19 field goal attempts per game last season in 21-22, Dinwiddie's only taking 13 attempts. Spencer's ability to combine his attacks whether he's pulling up or slashing, with the plays where he's setting up his teammates, that's exactly what the bucket getting of Beal needs next to him. He doesn't need his backcourt partner shooting 20 plus times on any given night, which is what was happening last season. This campaign, 
Dinwiddie is averaging five less assists than Brody last year. Russ led the league in dimes per game, but thing is, Spencer's turning it over three less times on average than Russell, so that really helps the organization of Washington's offensive attack. According to a national poll, the Cleveland Cavaliers' hot start was the most surprising hot start to NBA fans. That's not egregious, as I did a video on the Cavs just a few days ago. But a few days after that Cavs video was posted, Cleveland was taken down by these Washington Wizards in a late fourth quarter battle. One of the biggest reasons for why the Wizards could actually be the most shocking team in basketball is because of how the pieces in the Westbrook trade have performed. Leading the team in player efficiency rating by far, the 27-year-old Montrez Harrell is having a career year with his third different team in three years. Trez is tops in multiple statistical categories across the NBA. Harrell's number 20 among all players in offensive rebounds per night, number 21 in blocks per game, number seven in field goal percentage, number 11 in effective field goal percentage, number four in true shooting percentage, number five in PER, number six in value over replacement, number six in box plus minus, and finally, number four in win shares. In all those categories, Harrell's ranked among some of the top superstars in our game, so that just goes to show you how special he's playing right now. Montrez is averaging an amazing 18.3 points and a career-high 9 rebounds per game. His 84% stroke from the free throw line is a career-high as well, and those top off the beastly stats from Trez. New Wizards coach Wes Unseld Jr. has done an outstanding job of getting the most out of both Harrell and the rest of the new pieces in DC that he was gifted in the Russ trade. Caldwell Pope's playing 30 minutes per game like he did with the Lakers last season, and he gets so much playing time because of his lateral quickness on the perimeter. KCP's a high IQ defender and a marksman from deep. Pope shot 41% from three over 67 games in Hollywood last season. That's down to 36% this year, but again, like Beal struggles from deep. That percentage is only going to increase. For the time being, KCP's floor spacing and decent nine points per night have helped Beal out. Moving on to the next Wizards player I'm gonna talk about, coming off a game-winning jumper and clutch triples one after the other in Cleveland, the most shocking development of maybe any player in the league this season has come from the former Utah Ute in college and of course the former Laker, Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma's number four on the Wiz in bucket getting at 15 points per game, that's the third highest total of the five-year pro's career. However, his three-point percentage is at a career best, 39%. There was a ton of pressure on Kuz from LeBron in that last season in LA. He never could build off his sensational rookie year after being a late first round pick. He was the only Laker young player who hadn't been traded yet. Of course, Lonzo went, Ingram went, and now Kuzma's gone. But Washington has been a great fit for Kuz as he's having the time of his life setting big body screens for Beal and Dinwiddie and popping out for open looks from distance. Before breaking down whether or not the Wizards can keep it up, I'll go into the Wizards' full depth chart potentially in another video, but I wanted to quickly point out the team's most valuable bench player. Raul Neto's a very quick and intelligent backup point guard who can get the other four guys surrounding him wide open looks with ease. Neto's 8.4 points and three dimes per game off the bench has relieved a lot of the playmaking burden that initially falls to Bradley and Spencer. So can Washington keep this up? The 21-22 Wizards are now tied for the second best start in their franchise's history with the teams from 68-69 and 14-15. The 1974-75 Bullets hold top honors. They went 9-2 in their first 11 games. In their last win against the Cavs, Harrell was just too much for Cleveland big men Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, pouring in 24 points in 25 minutes on just 12 field goal attempts. He added 11 rebounds, three assists, and two blocks. Just a terrific all-around performance. Barring injury from Harrell, the rest of the supporting cast, along with the face of Washington, D.C. and Bradley Beal, I genuinely think this Wizards team can be a top five seed in the Eastern Conference this year. But we'll see if I'm wrong. I just think with who they've beaten so far, Washington's proved to be legit. The Wizards have beat playoff teams last year in the Celtics and Hawks twice. They beat my Raptors, 
They beat another playoff team last year in Memphis. They knocked off the reigning champs. And on Wednesday night, they overcame a 10-point fourth quarter deficit to beat the steaming Cavs. For next video shout out, why or why not is the Wizards hot start legit? Speaks winner for today goes to Ona Ebodaga, who says, with all honesty, the Warriors scare the living hell out of me. Ona's been a commenter of mine for a while, and I know he's a Hawks fan, so that right there is an unbiased take. Ona gets the first spot on the Speaks board with today's honorable mention going to the flesh. Thanks for the great answers from everyone. Compete for NBA jerseys and merch in Community Speaks, which I'm giving away in the holiday season by leaving your take on today's question. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.